no one knows how powerful they are until they're put to the test. Five tuned up production model sports cars are out to discover the truth. Just how high is their actual high performance level? The Audi TT Bimoto from MTM with two engines. Is 400 kilometers per hour possible? Ready, steady, go! The Brabus SV12, can it hit 330? The MTM Audi RS6, a family car faster than 300? Ready, steady, go! Where are the limits to the power of the Trident worn by the Maserati Coupe from Modena? And most likely the favourite here, can the Porsche GT Street S from Techart send its needle all the way to 350 kmh? Go! At the high-speed track at Nardo in southern Italy, all five are driven full throttle and pushed to their limit. Our team encountered ideal conditions for testing such extreme driving machines. Here you drive around a continuous bank track, he says. Only a slight curve, but very steep. Up to 240 kmh, there's no side force. One lap is 12.5 kilometers long, and that's something unique in Europe and perfect for us. The big favorite, the Porsche GT Street S, tuned by Techart, is the most powerful. It's based on the Porsche GT2. The source of all its power, the 646 horses produced by the GT Street's boxer engine. Pulled by all that power, Techart hopes to push its Porsche far beyond 300 km per hour, and here in Nardo, even make it to 350. Three cars up to meet the challenge, the MTM Audi RS6, the Modena Maserati Coupe and the Brabus SV12. With its 12-cylinder bi-turbo, the SL has the greatest power and chance against the Porsche. To do so, it sacrifices not one gram of comfort. The Brabus version of the Mercedes SL600 tips the scales at two tons. Its weight should have no influence upon its accelerating to 330. For this feat, Brabus has increased the displacement of the SL engine to 6.3 litres. The SV12 churns out 640 horsepower. In a beauty contest, this guy would have the best chances, the Maserati from the Italian tuner, Modena. In this case, it's full speed ahead. The aim of this coupe is to hit 300. The modified eight-cylinder engine delivers 550 horsepower. That actually should be sufficient for 300 kmh at this high-speed track. The car most ideally suited for family travel among our athletic contestants is the Audi RS6 from Motorentechnik Meyer, better known as MTM. Inside, with room for five and sporting equipment, the RS6 also targets 300 kmh. Made possible by a 532 horsepower V8. The RS6 did not come here all alone. It's accompanied by an Audi TT of a very special kind, also courtesy of MTM. The TT Bimoto has two hearts beating inside, one engine up front and another in the back. 
Together, they beat with a pulse of 850 horsepower. This MTM prototype, tuned specifically for high performance, takes on a special position in our challenge and does not count towards the final results. Its aim here, 400. Can the MTM Audi TT hit the 400 mark? How far does the needle swing on the other models? These goats at the track in Nardo are in for a pretty loud night as we return to our challenge of extreme sports cars. It's restless concentration in the pit lane as the teams meticulously prepare their cars. The finishing touches and just the right tuning is administered to the cars. In the battle of speed, it's the little details that count. The tyres, for example, are of crucial importance. Only production tyres are allowed. A specialist checks them before they're sent out onto the track. Pressure and alignment have to be just perfect for a dependable and safe ride at more than 300 kmh. Should something be wrong with the tyres, the Pirelli crew can react real fast or have spares ready in an instant. Nothing is to be left to chance as far as the tyres are concerned for these test cars. The tyres are their life's guarantee, he says, since the tyres are the only part in contact with the pavement. They have the toughest job to do and guarantee absolute safety. It's finally time to head back out onto the track. Head of the testing, Otto Hofmeier fits a special measuring device into each car. The test results are absolutely exact. There's no depending simply on the speedometer readings. We use a GPS as an onboard computer, he says. Every two seconds it gives us a speed signal, an effective speed reading. Maximum speed is stored on the computer so that we have the control over how fast the car is going. Three hundred and six should be no problem, he estimates. Here it's the boss himself behind the wheel. Roland Meyer's Audi RS6 is the first to be tested. This tuned family sports car is aiming for more than 300 kilometers per hour. In the beginning, everything goes as planned. Roland Meyer feels his way up to the 300 mark. Then suddenly, the RS6 loses speed. A big shock as it passes by for the first time. Right in front of the test camp, the MTM starts spewing flames at a speed of 286. No need to worry, the RS6 makes it back into the pits just in time. No hope for its engine though. Water and oil temperature were okay, he says. Then I saw a flame in my mirror. I slowed down and it was gone. I figured there was fuel in my exhaust pipe and tried again. But then it didn't work anymore. Another spell of bad luck. The Maserati is also forced to give up. Engine problems bring the coupe back to the base. In the end, it just barely makes 300. The engine would have been damaged, he tells us, if he'd driven at that speed any longer. It turns out to be a duel between the teams from Techart and Brabus. The SL quickens its pace. A pro driver has been flown in especially to drive the car and get top speed acceleration out of it. Brabus has set 330 as its target. At Techart Porsche, they're still busy with the final fine tuning, as the Brabus only records a time of 327. Techart hopes their Porsche GT Street can beat that. 350 may sound too optimistic, but in the end, it achieves 335, less than hoped for, but still enough to make it our high-speed winner. 
followed by the Brabus SL in second, slightly ahead of the Mordena Maserati and totally out of the race with the dead engine, the MTM RS6. Sadly, the Audi TT Bimoto had to give up the dream of 400 kmh as one of its two engines burnt out. Mercedes is taking advantage of this year's Frankfurt Motor Show to unveil its super sports car, the SLR McLaren. This handsome car combines the styling from the current Mercedes-Benz Silver Arrow Formula One race car with design elements of the SL sports cars of the 1950s. A supercharged 5.5 liter engine producing 626 horsepower allows this car to charge ahead from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in only 3.8 seconds. Its carbon fiber body gives it a stiffness previously unknown to street-going cars. Our next story also features an SLR, but one of a completely different kind. Robert Furtak is the owner of one of the most sought-after cars in the world. He has a real treasure in his garage. Wait a second. Is that really possible, you might ask? A Mercedes SLR? Didn't that car just debut a couple of moments ago at the Frankfurt Motor Show? The answer is simple and incredible at the same time. This Silver Arrow is a one-of-a-kind in Poland. Having seen the Mercedes SLR prototype for the first time in 1999, Furtag gathered any information he could find about it. Still, that wasn't enough to build a car. He had to have exact measurements. Christmas of 1999, he discovered a 1 to 18 scale toy model of the SLR design study. Now he had the right proportions. All he had to do was multiply it by 18. It was then he realized he might actually be able to build his dream car. And there was no one to stop him. A Mercedes 500 SEC formed the basis. Furtak shortened the wheelbase by 29 centimeters. Piece by piece, he put together the body. After four long years and countless hours of work, the Furtak SLR made its way to the painter. Furtak's effort paid off. He has created a sculpture on four wheels, which no one would dare call a pirated copy. The car is very impressive, right down to the finest detail, even the interior with its elegant leather decor. One thing he couldn't match, the engine. The Polish SLR has no 626 horses, but is the 20-year-old eight-cylinder taken from the 500 SEC. In a country with hardly any fast motorways, some might think there's no need for high performance anyway. BMW. When darkness sets in at the racing track in Nardo, Italy, the barometer of suspense rises. Then our six super sports cars are to show what they're capable of. Temperatures remain steady for better comparison of the speed results. The contestants are prepared very meticulously for these extreme tests. Tire pressure, for instance, is of utmost importance. At Porsche, the head of the development division, Roland Kusmal, sees personally to the snug fit of the nuts and bolts on a Carrera GT. Otto Hofmeier is head of testing and responsible for the high-speed test. Hofmeier knows what is needed to be really fast. First of all, the car must have great performance. Then it must handle well and it has to be manageable at this speed. We check whether it is drivable. In the twilight hours of the evening, these super sports cars make their way to the high-speed track. The clear favourite, the 660 horsepower Enzo Ferrari. It's a car Ferrari is used to move the benchmark in speed competition, once again, a notch higher. We don't really look at it as a competition. Physics decides the outcome here. At some point there is no more increase in performance and a vehicle no longer can be kept under control on the road due to its aerodynamics. So there are natural limits. They are below 400, right now at least.
The testing team installs the measuring devices. The speed is recorded using GPS satellite positioning. In its first laps around the track, the Aston Martin surprises with a speed of 309, exceeding factory specs by 9 kilometers. It remains under control at all times, and it seems that nothing can destroy its cool. The Porsche is another of the favourites here. The first time around the track, the Carrera GT hits 328, just undercutting the factory specifications by two kilometres per hour. Now, the second lap for Porsche. This Uber Porsche reaches a speed of 334. That's nearly enough to beat the SLR. What position will the SLR finish in, she asks? Well, position, that's hard to say. Actually, there's no way of comparing the cars in this comparison. We have the Enzo and the Carrera, which are street-legal sports cars. Then we have a couple of GTs like the Bentley, the SLR and the Aston Martin. Among the GTs, I'd say we'll finish first in the category of speed and acceleration. Overall, we'll probably end up in third place. In the would say we'll on a short while later, the SLR burns the best time onto the asphalt. With its 334, it reaches the exact speed specified by the manufacturer and matches the record of the much lighter Porsche, turning it into a type of blue comet in the night at Nardo. The night is unusually cold. The first dew of early morn furrows the brow with worry on Lamborghini engineer Michele Zagiano. Normally, this car uh, reached the... Uh three and 30 kilometers per hour with the normal production car. This night I think uh, there is too much difficult to reach this uh, performance because uh, there is too much humidity but uh, I think 3.27, 3.26 uh, it's uh, reachable for this car. A top speed of 330 this evening is much lower than what the Mercia Lago could normally achieve. Still, the head of testing, Otto Hofmeier, excludes any influence from the weather. The temperature remained more or less the same. It is a bit more humid that has no positive nor negative effect. If we compare all our measurements, everything is okay. In the wee hours of the morning, the test favourite appears on the scene. The Enzo Ferrari is fitted with the instruments to measure its first lap. Before and after each trial, they check the temperature of the tyres. Following a warm-up lap, the test team from Ferrari pushes the car to the limit. The Enzo is faster than 350. At least, that's what they claim at Maranello. The speedometer needle seems to confirm that. Also, the GPS data show, with a speed of 355.1 kilometers per hour, the Enzo is the fastest super sports car in this comparison. Whether the Enzo Ferrari can also outdo its competitors in the acceleration contest and whether it keeps its nose out in front on the handling course, that's what the third part of this comparison has in store in our next show. At the high-speed track in Nardo, Italy, it's time for part three of our super sports car comparison. In the acceleration contest from 0 to 100, then to 300 kilometers per hour, the Bentley takes off and reaches 100 after 5.2 seconds. Somewhat faster the DB9, it takes 0.2 seconds off the time of the Bentley. Thanks to its enormous amount of torque, the SLR shoots to 300 in 30.6 seconds. There's not too much time to sit back and enjoy in the Carrera GT. After only 3.8 seconds, the needle hits 100 and swings all the way to 300 in 34.2. As could be expected, the Murcielago, that's Spanish for bat, takes off like a bat out of hell. Its effort pays off. After 3.7 seconds, it's at 100. After 37.6, that's 300. Breathe deeply now.
concentrate and full throttle ahead. After only 26.1 seconds, the Enzo Ferrari makes it to 300 kilometers per hour. That makes the Enzo the clear winner of the acceleration contest. With an output of 450 horsepower, the DB9 is the weakest in the bunch, and that also accounts for its poor showing in the 0-300 contest. In daily driving, other qualities are more conspicuous. On their way to the handling course near Bari, neither tenths of seconds nor maximum speeds are important. Admiring looks are something each earns on its way. Whoever wants to get a nose ahead at the Autodroma del Levante requires a balanced overall package. Porsche engineer Roland Kussmauer is confident. Here at the track, he says, the Porsche with its mid-engine concept, similar to that of the Enzo Ferrari, should be at an advantage. We should do quite well here. The track is full of tight curves, and the Porsche feels right at home. Its brakes prove to be excellent here. After 53.9 seconds, it throws in the gauntlet for the others to take up the challenge. Thanks to all-wheel drive, the Murcielago circles the course in quite a good-natured way. Still, it's no match for the Porsche and loses nearly two seconds per lap. Although it may have been the glorious victor at Nardo, at the tight course of the Autodromo, the intricate aerodynamics of the Enzo Ferrari are of no benefit. The Ferrari loses more than a whole second per lap to the Porsche. Size and weight are a big burden to the SLR. Despite its NASCAR sound and abundance of torque, it's left in the wake of the likes of an Enzo Ferrari or Carrera GT. The Bentley almost seems out of place here. It has a noble and relaxed manner as it drives around the course. Who really cares about how a Bentley fares at the handling circuit? Nobody is able to match the time of the Porsche. The Aston Martin is only a second behind the much stronger SLR. A sports car comparison unlike any other, but without any clear winner. In terms of speed, the 660 horsepower Enzo Ferrari is number one. The Porsche is the car with two faces. It's extremely good on the racetrack and still almost a car for daily use. And even if its mighty 12-cylinder makes it quite a respectable car, out on the track, the Bentley is only a mere visitor. But for the drive home, it's probably the most comfortable to ride in.